Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dutch. Welcome to my 2021 Clash overview. Um, in this series, I'm going to be reviewing after a year of playing Gears 5 on and off, or a lot, of playing Horde and Escape. Um, yeah, what my favorite, you know, builds are when it comes to uh, these classes. So I'm cutting these up in three portions, um, Assault, Tank, and Support. I'm not going to be really reviewing the promotional ones because... Frankly, compared to all the main ones, I think they're trash. Uh, so it's mostly going to be all these um, categories. Today, we're starting off with Assault for Horde and Escape. So I'm going to go for the Horde portion first and Escape after. Again, these are my preferences and uh, based on the cards and stuff that I have at 20. Uh, but obviously, if you don't have any of these cards, that's fine. You can just fill them in uh, as you go. So let's start off with the Blade Master. Uh, Blade Master is obviously a melee class, so I tend to play it as a melee class. Uh, the passive ability kills with melee or bleed damage heal half of your max HP, and I resist 30% melee damage is very handy. Now, when you're playing Horde, you can only get bleed damage by um, upgrading the perk while you're playing. So that's obviously you know costs you energy to do that. So when I play on Inconceivable or Master, I tend not to really touch the Blade Master unless I'm in a close quarter map such as Overload, uh, Blood Drive, uh, basically places where you're close to a tap and that teammates could potentially revive you if you go down. So for the Blade Master, I use Brawler, Blade Dancer, which is new, don't necessarily need it. You can swap this for uh, Energy Surge, for example, or Ambush. Kind of depends on uh, what you want to do with it. Um, shock Chain, obviously very handy when you start using Electro Blade. Shock Shield, which is obviously good to have more health. And lastly, on the flank, in case I am against a boss that I can't melee, then I'll use on the flank to use Shotgun, any type of ballistic weapon, really. Now in Escape, I use almost the exact same setup, except for Venom Blade. Now, bleeding for Blade Master, my opinion, is pretty crucial, especially um, in Escape. Because, like it says with the passive ability, when you're doing bleed damage or you do melee damage and you kill something, you gain HP back. 145% damage on level 3 alone is massive, right? So, if I'm playing on any escape map where CQB is a must, such as against rejects... Um, sires for example any of those maps this is a uh, a really good choice for me so that pretty much makes up the blade master demolition it says it in the name it's all about demolition aka explosives so for horde i run spotter support razor hail confirmed kill grenade satchel and custom lancer gl grenade satchel is pretty much what makes or breaks this class for me um Considering the demo can mark up five targets and they last much longer, um, when you have things spotted or your enemies have, or your enemies, your teammates have things spotted, you can drop the artillery strike, you know, pretty much all the time and kill everything on the map. However, the grenade satchel one is for me what makes the biggest difference because for about 500 points, you can buy your entire set of grenades. Now, don't quote me on this, but I think you have about seven grenades, six or seven grenades for each time you reload your grenades. And all you have to do is just chuck nades. Simple as that. If you have a very small map like Overload, you can just go to the fabricator, get grenades, chuck them, go back, get grenades and chuck them again. You'll kill everything because everything gets bleed because of Razor Hail. Um, if you're out of grenades and you need to shoot something i use the custom lancer and of course the boom shot which you spawn with so that's it for a uh, horde on escape let's take a look i used almost everything the same except something i've learned was good kill good kill is a starter skill that before you have level six it's gonna say something about dropping an ammo sliver so it's one of those like little magazines that only give you know three to five rounds for any weapon or something which isn't that great but once you have this maxed out you get ammo pouches 
for every single kill near an ally. So if you're playing escape and you're running with an infiltrator, a blade master, a brawler, a nomad, whatever can, can get up close and do something. Every single kill you get near them within five meters, they're going to drop an entire box of ammo. And this is a lot of ammo. I'm not going to show you so you can figure out for yourself whether or not you want to run this or not. But it's basically a second tactician. <laughs> so it's very, very good. Um, Razor Hail again for any explosive damage that you might do. Grenade Satchel goes for, you know, speaks for itself. Spotter Support, again, it's completely up to you if you want to use that. And Custom Boom Shot. So I tend not to really run the demo all that much in, um, in Escape. Other than if I can't run Tactician, for example. Or don't want to run Tactician. So, Infiltrator. One of my favorite classes because he's, uh, he's shotgun heavy. Um, passive ability, exit and cloak by firing a ballistic weapon deals 10 times the amount of damage for that shot. This allows you to almost one shot on master difficulty a Swarmak. Just because you do, just do so much damage. Um, spawn in with a shotgun, of course. But for the cards, we use Stim Batteries, Blood Resonance, Enhanced Stim, Laceration, and Reaper. <laughs> Uh, not in any particular order or anything, but essentially this to me is a godlike class. You have the shotgun, that's what you spawn with. Thank you, Admiral. There you go. The dude wants to play. Um, what's very interesting about the infiltrator is with laceration, any shotgun hit within five meters does a certain amount of blood damage or bleeding damage. Now, while something's bleeding, 410% damage already, you do, in this case, 150% more shotgun damage, which stacks the bleed. So this 150% shotgun damage is also getting 110% bleed damage on top of that. Now, if that's not enough, once I killed something with a shotgun, I get 50% stim. But because I use stim capacity, that can go up to 200%. So I have three times the amount of HP, basically. Now, while I have that much stim, I have 55% damage resistance while I'm stimmed. So if you're a good player that knows how to move around the map, uh, can basically weave in, a, in and out of, of targets, uh, this is a really, really strong build to not only use in Horde, but also in Escape. Because as you can tell right here, in Escape, I use the exact same setup. So... For me, this is one of the best classes to play. It's a lot of fun, but of course, you're completely reliant on a Nasher or Overkill. So keep mindful of that. Next up is the Marksman. Now, Marksman, every sniper's wet dream. You got X-Ray, you can shoot through walls. Um, right out the gate, you already get Ambush. So a lot of this class is just centered around headshots with a long shot or an M-Bar. I tend to rock the long shot. As you can see, you got ambush, explosive critical hit, exploit weakness, critical parade, and long shot handling. If you don't have long shot handling yet and you're playing Horde, I would focus most of my efforts on either the Marksa or the Embar. I personally hate the Embar, so I would rock more uh, the Marksa and long shot uh, while I can. But once you un unlock long shot handling, the critical parade, uh, you know, is going to go through the roof. You're going to get headshots, one-shot kills constantly. Because of the explosive critical hit, it's just going to um, increase the uh, parade, essentially, right? Your your ultimate ability. And, and that's pretty much it. It's just all armed, easy class, simple to do. I don't really run any of the other cards because the trade-off is just too much. I see precision is okay, but I've noticed that most of the time, you kill everything so quickly, you don't get any chance for any freeze damage anyway. So, Now, for escape, I run exactly the same build, just in a different order, for no uh, no other reason than that's just what I use. Um, again, all of the rest of these cards, it's up to you, but I would say, if you can go without them, go without them. Now, last but not least for the assault classes is the Nomad. Nomad is one of my uh, favorites next to the Infiltrator. 
uh, because it allows for some nice build diversity. When I play Horde, I usually go for a Marksa build. So that's Armored Shot, Marksa Mastery, Intimidation, Consecutive Shot, and Lifeline. Now, this does force me to kind of stay back around, like, you know, Marksa or Marksman level uh, distance and just go for headshots as a support uh, player. Um, yeah, that's essentially why I run it on, on Horde. Because I noticed, you know, I can... You can go in Horde with the execution builds and try to just fear everyone, and that could work. But a lot of times it just takes... The, the round will take longer, and you're not really doing anything other than annoying your teammates because everyone's running around now. <laughs> so, in Escape, however, I do switch it up because not every map has a Marksa, uh, but every map has enemies that you can execute. So, for Escape, I run Nomad... Uh, sorry, uh, Menace which increases my, uh, or recharges my fear for 50 seconds for each execu execution. So about two free executions and my ultimate will be ready already. Uh, I got fear, which is obviously fear on execute. Intimidation, in case I do get a headshot kill with a bolt arc or something. Execution shield, in case I get shot while executing. <laughs> and concussive rounds. Now, concussive rounds is something that you could potentially swap out for... I don't know, maybe Lifeline or something. Uh, maybe Nasher Proficiency. Maybe Fearsome Aura or Terror to increase the durability uh, or the duration of fear. However, because you spawn with a Boltok and many maps have drones on them, if you hit something in the head, they get stunned. And when they're stunned, you can execute them instantly. So you can basically get your ult up in a matter of minutes as soon as the game starts because you can just stun free enemies execute them back to back and that's it and not to mention because of phase as soon as you execute the first one as long as they're within what's it say 10 meters of the guy you're executing you're gonna fear them and make them you know prone to a uh, melee kill so that's uh pretty much my my overview of classes um, I'm not going to show any gameplay because I want you guys to find out for yourself how much uh, you like this type of stuff. And I don't want to really want to give it away of uh, how cool some things are when, uh, you know, things get intense. So let me know what you guys think of this. Let me know which classes you run with the perks and stuff and uh, what you do like or dislike about certain classes in uh, Horde or Escape. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one, which will be the tank category. All right. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Peace.